Welcome to episode 100 of the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'm Aaron Brightman, and happy Monday, June 26th. Wanted to cover this episode focusing on Rutgers football, recruiting the current state in terms of uh, three commitments over the past uh, two days over the weekend, six last week. Wanted to talk about where the 24 class sits right now, where they project to finish, uh, kind of the geographical footprint of this class and overall thoughts of just where I think things are going and uh, the positives and, you know, concerns with this class as well. So starting off just in terms of who committed over the weekend and you can find it at scarletfaithful.com. I have commit posts for all these uh, uh, recruits. Uh, Antonio White, three star uh, out of Georgia. Um Recently uh, visited, uh, yeah, he's an athlete, but he projects defensively. Um, he uh, took visits to Vanderbilt, Kentucky, and Rutgers. He's got multiple SEC offers, multiple ACC offers, multiple Big Ten offers. Uh, so really good get here uh, in terms of uh, getting him on campus and getting him committed in June. Uh, really athletic kid. Uh, and someone that I think, you know, definitely is on the higher end of uh, – this class in terms of potential. Then on Sunday, interesting day, two different commits, kind of unique stories with both Sage Claudius, uh, an athlete who is actually a wide receiver, but also um, is projecting on the defensive side, probably going to be a safety at 6'4", uh, went to St. Moore's Prep, St. Thomas Moore Prep in Connecticut from West Virginia, uh, committed, and then also is reclassifying now to 2023. So um, that is a... Uh, you know, interesting move, good move, I think, to get as much talent as you can in uh, this summer. He's going to enroll. Uh, how much you can expect of him next season, obviously, you shouldn't expect much. He could redshirt. He could be a contributor on special teams. But um, long term, uh, they obviously seem pretty high on him. And, uh, you know, he, he's someone that had multiple Power 5 offers as well. So, uh, and then uh, later in the day, you had Carter Kadow. Uh, offensive lineman from Wisconsin. He attended Rutgers Big Man Camp uh, this weekend. And uh, interesting story in that he's a tight end converting to tackle. Uh, so he came into Big Man Camp. He worked out for offensive line coach Pat Flaherty. Uh, and in my mind, if he's good enough for Pat Flaherty, he's good enough for me. They worked him out extensively, and they really liked him. So they offered him on the spot, and he, he accepted. So he just took an official visit to Indiana the week before. Um, his teammates of Sam Piloff, the three-star linebacker in Middleton, Wisconsin, uh, that Rutgers already has in the 24 class. So, uh, listen, he's 6'7". Uh, he's going to have to fill out, but he's uh, super athletic. And um, Rutgers needs all the help they can get on the offensive line. Uh, he's the third offensive line commit in this class, joining Kenny Jones uh, and uh, Andrew Raynor from uh, Florida. Uh so I thought that, that was, you know, position of need that they, they really uh, had to, to fill that hole in this class. You can never have enough offensive linemen. We know with Rutgers, I mean, there's a, there's a ton of young offensive linemen in the program already, but you can never have enough and it takes a long time to develop. So um, I think this is a really good get. Just talking in terms about where the class is right now, they have 19 commits. You have to figure probably five to seven spots left around 25. It's hard to say nowadays, too, especially with the transfer portal. Um, but I think the staff has to be as selective as possible moving forward. What I will say is I do think that they've been very strategic in terms of who they've added, how they've added them. You know, And yes, rankings matter. Now, the good, Rutgers is currently ranked number 21st nationally in the 24-7 sports composite rankings. Uh, the concern is that they're not going to finish anywhere near that long term uh, in terms of their player average rating, uh, play, player rating average. Uh, they rank 12th in the Big Ten currently. They're just over 86 uh, player rating uh, average. Uh, last year, if you look at the class that finished 57th nationally uh, last in the Big Ten, they uh we're just under an 86 player rating right now. They're 12th or right above, uh, well, fairly well above Maryland and Indiana, but that matters. That matters. Right. And, and, and I've talked about it before. I mean, there's plenty of reports out there. I mean, talent, talent leads to wins, right? The, the better you recruit talent, the more talent you have in your program, typically the more you win. 
yes, coaching really matters. Development really matters. And, you know, to Greg Schiano's uh, uh, credit, he has fully embraced the fact that Rutgers is a developmental program. I mean, that's how he made his bones in the first tenure. And he's been pretty vocal about that in this, um, you know, off season talking about that, or, you know, I guess towards the end of last season as well. And I do think that it's clear with this class, although they're probably projecting closer to a top 40, top 50 class. Again, it all goes back to how they fill out those last few spots. Hopefully they are very selective. Hopefully they are able to land a couple four-star guys. If not more, they don't have any yet, but that will obviously, um, cement their ranking in the 30s if they can get there uh but at the end of the day i think that who they have added in this class they, they have a plan they have a plan in terms of how they fit long term how they want to develop them how they think they can develop um you know i think carter is a great example of a kid that they're you know investing time and and into thinking that it could pay off big he could become a starting tackle for Rutgers. Um, and, you know, I think the fallback plan with uh, – I think a big key in this class is the versatility they have with a lot of the players uh, that they're bringing in because, you know, worst case, he ends up being a blocking tight end. And, you know, with Shiraka's offensive system, you can never have enough of those two. So, again, I think they're not putting all their eggs in one basket with this recruit, uh, but they have a vision for where they can ultimately develop him. Uh, I think that – it's interesting how much they've gone out of the state. You know, I know people say New Jersey is down this year. If you do look at the 24 seven sports rankings specifically, um, they only have four, two, four stars in the class composite rankings. There's eight, four stars, but it, it is, you know, I think to say it's, it's a, a poor class for 24 in New Jersey is not accurate. Uh, the top 40 all have, all of those uh, prospects in the top 40 in New Jersey per 24-7 composite rankings that have committed to a program, they're all Power 5 programs. So if Stanford has is, uh, has several commits in the class, Syracuse, um, you know, obviously the Blue Bloods. Uh, th th there's, there's quality in this class for sure. It's more of the, that there's less high-end graded talent per se. But again, how many... New Jersey's been hit or miss, you know, in the Power Five rankings in terms of how they've actually performed at the next level. So I've been a proponent of going outside of the state for a while uh, because I do think that that it's hurt Rutgers football in the past of, of waiting too long on certain New Jersey kids that ultimately just want to get out of the state. So uh, just two commits currently in the class out of New Jersey, A.J. Serace, quarterback, Really high in him. Look at his offer list. He's got a lot of Power Five offers. He's you know been in the in the quarterback circle. He was in you know the, the Elite Eleven, uh, competed in that. Uh, his I think he is a mature quarterback. Obviously he comes from a, a coaching line with Bob Sarais, the head coach of Princeton, offensive mind, uh, former Detroit Lion. So I think he's someone that that is going to end up outperforming his recruiting ranking. Uh, he is a three-star, high three-star, and he's, uh, I believe, the fourth best uh, in terms of recruit ranking for Rutgers in this class, but really high on him. Kenny Jones is the only recruit committed to Rutgers in the 24 class that doesn't have multiple Power 5 offers. So, again, offer lists, I think, are – you can get caught up in rankings, and rankings are important – but I think offer lists are telling as well in terms of how many Power 5 programs are offering guys that are committed to Rutgers. Kenny Jones is a guy that I think would have multiple Power 5 offers if he didn't commit last fall. He was the first commit in the 24 class for Rutgers, and I think that that is a big reason he doesn't have more. So um, I think that that's, that's a step forward, right? If you look all the way back, I mean, yes, it's year four, Shiano, but even, even in the early, you know, first couple of years, the COVID years, you know, they, they took some flyers on guys that didn't have a lot of offers, didn't have power five offers. We were used to seeing that in the Ash era and that's kind of been phased out. They're, they're getting guys that, I mean, all the commits they've gotten in the last week, they all took official, it's not just offers. They took official visits to other power five schools this month. So that, to me, that, that that's a positive sign. That means they're getting quality recruits just because they're not ranked four stars, just because they're not, you know, top 500 national guys. These are guys being actively recruited and taking official visits to other Power 5 schools. So I think they are getting versatility. You know, they're getting some speed guys. They're getting some uh, guys with, with 
improved athleticism, they're making the roster better. Are they doing it as fast as, as we all hope? I don't think so. I think it's fair to say that, you know, is Shiana recruiting at a level that we had all hoped at this point? I would say it's fair to say probably not. You know, I think maybe expectations weren't fair in terms of thinking he was going to start landing top 25 classes back to back to back. Now, he did come in before NIL, so that's obviously been a major factor. But if you remember back, I mean, Shiano won. Yes, I know it was the Big East. It's not the Big Ten. But he, he his only top 25 class of his tenure was his last one when he technically left before signing day. So it's going to take time. Again, I like that they're spreading out the geographical footprint. They have six commits now from the Midwest, one from Ohio, two from uh Wisconsin and three from Michigan. I think that's important. Recruiting the Big Ten footprint is important. Rutgers is strategically going in there now in a way they hadn't in the past. I thought, you know, with Shiano's background in Ohio, that would be important. But the fact that they're getting other states too is big. You're seeing uh, Dave Brock's impact in North Carolina. Now three recruits there. He used to work at University of North Carolina. He's got connections down there. I really like the two receivers he's added. Benjamin Black, by the way, just moved up in the rankings. Middle of the pack now in the class. Uh, was Did not have a composite ranking prior. Uh, super fast. And I think he's a guy that's underrated in terms of his playmaking ability. And then Isaiah Crumpler is, is at the top of the class, um, right below Gabe Winowich, out of uh, the athlete out of uh, Michigan, who's going to be a running back and is a beast of a recruit. Uh, has that video out that I retweeted, uh, benching 225 over to, uh, around 25 times. But Crumpler, you know, a huge pipeline. His family, obviously, multiple NFL players there, and, and I think he's a really exciting. Uh, commit in this class still only a high three star out of North Carolina, but I think he's an impact recruit in this class for sure. So you're seeing impact there. Um, I, I, I really do like where the staff is at this point, the stability of the defensive side, you know, it's been a, it's a balanced 24 class um, in terms of offensive and defense. We can never have enough line help in terms of uh, both sides of the ball. They now have three offensive line commits four on the defensive side. We'll see what they add there moving forward. Um, but yes, you need to be as selective as possible. You need to, if they're not going to get four star guys to fill out this class, which realistically, they're not going to fill it all out with four star guys, but they need to make sure that who they are taking makes sense. And I know that's an obvious point, but don't reach on someone just to reach to fill out the class. If you need to leave spots open, leave spots open. And that's the beauty of the transfer portal now is you can fill gaps through the portal. So, it's going to be interesting to see how many they – I mean, they might only add a couple. They might add five to seven. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, the I think another thing I wanted to touch on is just the, the process of recruiting now with the early signing period. We've really seen a shift in the last two, three years in terms of, uh, you know, programs like Rutgers that aren't Blue Bloods, uh, filling up the class sooner, earlier than, than before. You know, it's the end of June, and they have 19 commits already. They have not a lot of spots left. Uh, you know, going into the fall, they're going to have the bulk of their class committed. Uh, obviously, it's verbal. Signing day is in December. Obviously, getting off to a good start in September and having a uh, showing signs of progress during the 23 season is important to keeping the class together. I don't think there's a ton of NIL risk. I, th I think NIL in college football is, is not making the same impact as a whole as it is in college basketball. Uh, simply because, you know, the money going around and the number of players, um, yes, the top recruits uh, are, you know, NIL is a major factor. But I think with this class, it's about showing progress and showing a vision for those commits in the program. And when they're seeing development, when they're seeing, I think another key is seeing the offense under Kirk Shiraka first year, seeing what progress the offense makes under his direction. That's going to open, uh, I think, doors for the 25 class. Uh, but I think there's a lot of encouraging things, but I think that, uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting in terms of how the process cha has changed in terms of the timeline, you know, and there's guys, uh, you know, there's talk about Willie Love, uh, you know, four-star uh, New Jersey commit from Camden, um, you know, Rutgers has been high on him. Do they still have room for him, you know, in terms of where they're at, in terms of the makeup of their class? It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, so again, Rankings matter. Rankings are important. It's not all about the rankings. Um, I, I, I understand the concern. 
if Rutgers finishes 47th nationally in this class, people are going to look at it and be down. Again, I'm high on a lot of commits in this class. I think top to bottom, it's a really solid class. I know the grade isn't much different than last year. I think there's some guys in last last year's class that's going to make an impact sooner rather than later as well. So, um, again, New Jersey, I think it's, it's just interesting strategically. I, I don't think the class as a whole is bad. I think there's a lot of power five quality in the class. I think that Rutgers is just showing maybe it's a statement in terms of they're not going to wait around for New Jersey commits just to wait around. They're going to um, fill spots with talent that they identify and, and go with what they think is the best fit. So it's going to be interesting to see the ramifications of this next year in terms of uh, how they approach New Jersey. Uh, obviously, the, it's, a, it's a really talented class in terms of rankings, right? Uh, but I think Shiano has made the point recently too, just in terms of depth. I mean, New Jersey is not as big of a state. The top 40 is solid, but you know, listen, they're going to Florida and they're getting, you know, guys ranked in the top 200 that are power five guys. You're going to Ohio, you're going to these deeper States, North Carolina, you know, that they, they might not be ranked in the top 50, but they're still power five talent. So that's a good thing. I think that that shift, um, is really important and a positive sign. So overall, you know, I think it's a good class. I'm really curious to see how they finish it out. I think they do have to be super selective. And I don't think at this point you could take many reaches. I think you have to get proven, highly ranked talent out of the high school level to fill out your class. And if you can't, if you don't, I think you leave as many spots open to, to attack that portal uh, when you can uh, after the next season. So you can't put all your eggs in, in the portal basket, of course. I think they've done a good job in the portal going into this year. I'm going to talk about that in another podcast soon. Um, but overall, I think the current state of recruiting is good. It's not great. It's not bad. Uh, I think that um, progress on the field, of course, is the, going to be the ultimate game changer when it comes to recruiting. If Rutgers can get out of the gate and 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 win early in September, you know, and go into October 4-1, and one, if they can win six games and make a bowl game next year, it's going to greatly impact the 25 class. I think keeping the coaching staff together as well. We've seen Marquise Watson emerge as kind of an ace recruiter since Fran Brown has left. He's been a really good addition too. So I, I just think that uh, things are moving in the right direction. I think they're, they're moving at the speed limit. They're not speeding down the road, um, but they're moving in the right direction. And I think that's a positive. So those are my thoughts for now. Plenty more coming. Uh, as uh, this recruiting cycle develops uh, and check all of my coverage at scarletfaithful.com for commit posts on every recent commit uh, in the 24 class. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you tomorrow.